This is the new M3 MacBook Air, and specifically it's the 16 gigabyte model with the 512 SSD. And I've been keen to check this one out, mainly because I think this is one of the most important MacBook Air configurations since the Apple Silicon models launched. And I'll explain why in a moment. In this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions of the machine, and we'll share a few benchmarks. And for comparison purposes, I've run the same benchmarks on an M1 MacBook Air, also configured with 16 gigs of RAM. And you might ask, why not compare with the M2 model? Well, I'll explain that as we go. If you're already familiar with the M2 model, then there won't be much in the way of surprises here, because it's the same chassis, same screen, same keyboard, same speakers, and the same brilliant all-day battery life. So there's probably not much point in me going into detail on those elements, other than to say, this is a really great notebook. Build quality is excellent, it's lightweight, the display's fantastic, even if you're not a fan of the notch, and the keyboard is nice to use. It's a MacBook Air, and many would say it's the ultimate all-round general-purpose laptop, and for the most part, I'd agree with that. The unboxing experience is typical Apple, and it's worthy of the price point. I really like the colour-coded charging cable and MagSafe connector. And in the box, we've got a 35 watt dual USB-C charger, but you can optionally spec a 70 watt single port unit. The specific differences over the M2 model are firstly support for Wi-Fi 6E, which I can't test because our network here is Wi-Fi 6, but if you do have 6E network gear, that's a nice thing to have. Apple's website also indicates that there are some enhancements to the microphone array, mainly from a software perspective, it would seem, with better voice isolation and clarity. And thanks to Max Tech's sterling work opening one of these up, we can see that Apple is now installing two NAND flash chips on all models. So even if you get the base model with 256 gigs of storage, it'll still be fast. And this midnight finish supposedly has changed over the M2 generation and now has better fingerprint resistance. And I wanted to check that out, so I looked at a couple of the display models in two different stores, and where well, you expect everyone's gonna to have touched the finish. And I felt they didn't look too bad, so I thought it'd be worth checking out. Obviously, with a dark finish, it is going to show up fingerprints more than, say, the silver or starlight finish would, but yeah, it seems okay so far. And I really like this blue color. It's got a depth to it. I like the way it looks when the light catches it. Apple keyboards always seem to immediately suck all of the moisture out of your fingers and go shiny straight away, and there's no difference to that trend here. As I understand it, it's a side effect of the type of plastic they use, which apparently is necessary with slim keycaps, but I do wish this could be improved upon. The other changes on this model are really specific to the M3 chip. Apart from the obvious performance bump, the main differences are that the GPU now has hardware-accelerated ray tracing, which may be of interest if you've got a game that supports it, or if you're interested in trying out some 3D work. Now, arguably, you'd probably be buying a Pro or Max chip if you were doing that in any serious capacity, but it's nice to have it. The M3 chip also has a decode engine for AV1 video codecs. And again, that might be important to you if you work with those codecs. And finally, we now have support for two external displays, if you shut the lid and use a keyboard and mouse. So, as I said at the outset, this is an important configuration. Now, previously, if you wanted 16 gigabytes of unified memory in your MacBook Air, or indeed any M2 or M3 equipped Mac, it was a custom order. But now Apple offers this SKU with 16 gigs and a 512 gig SSD as a standard offering. That means that you can walk into the Apple store and buy one of these off the shelf configured with 16 gigs of RAM, which is exactly what I did. I think this is incredible news. I am planning to do a video where I talk more about when you should choose 16 gigs over eight. So I'm not gonna do a deep dive here, but if you're planning to push your MacBook Air beyond general computing and web browsing, 16 gigs of memory is well worth considering. But even the entry model with eight gigs of RAM and 256 of storage is going to be a brilliant machine for anyone who just needs a do-it-all, ultralight web and general purpose computer. Just bear in mind that if you step up to either of the more expensive options, you will get two extra graphics cores. So let's go and run some benchmarks. And I'm going to compare these with an M1 MacBook Air which is also a 16 gigabyte model. And that's because the M3 is not a massive step up over M2. So if you've already got an M2 MacBook Air, upgrading to this model probably doesn't make much sense. In fact, the M1 Air is still thoroughly capable. So would you even consider upgrading that? Well, let's take a look at the numbers, starting with the Geekbench 6 scores. 
And these are machines that we have specifically tested ourselves. This M3 MacBook Air comes in at 3051 for single core and 11,892 for multi-core. We'll put the M1 scores up for a side-by-side -side comparison, but you can see that the M3 model offers around 28% more single-core performance, which sounds like a lot, because it is. But just bear in mind that this is a synthetic benchmark, and in real-world use, you might not see that difference. The M1 is already very quick, and a lot of things you do happen almost instantly, so you're not likely to notice the difference here, unless you're pushing the machine really hard. Multi-threaded applications are a good example of this, so you might be more likely to notice the uplift in performance that M3 offers here, a rather healthy 38% increase. In fact, I was astonished to see that the M3 chip offers almost the same multi-threaded performance as M1 Max. That's an amazing improvement in just a couple of generations of these chips. Of course, if we make a comparison like that, we have to acknowledge that the MacBook Air has no fan in it, so it's going to thermally throttle much sooner. But still, to have that level of performance in such a thin and light notebook is a big win in my book. Let's now check out the GPU scores, again in Geekbench 6, starting with OpenCL. The M3 with its 10 GPU cores scores 30,508. And let's check out the M1 MacBook Air for comparison just bearing in mind that M1 came with eight GPU cores. And here the M3 shows a 62% improvement. Now, of course, these GPUs are optimized for Apple's Metal framework, so let's run that test now. And here the M3 scores 47,786. If we check the M1 result for comparison, again, we can see we've got a big improvement with M3, this time 56% improved. So just one final comparison before we take a look at SSD speeds. Let's run the Blackmagic raw speed test. This benchmark shows the speed of both the CPU and the GPU for decoding Blackmagic raw video. Remember, there are no hardware optimizations for B-RAW in these machines, so if you work with this type of video content, it's going to rely on CPU, or more likely GPU acceleration. And this is a good example of a use case where you might want 16 gigs of RAM over the standard eight. So here we're looking at the scores for 8K footage at a 12 to 1 compression ratio. And we can see the M3 can manage 32 frames per second on CPU decoding, and 67 frames per second on GPU decode. That's pretty incredible. It means that 8K raw video footage will play back smoothly on this ultralight laptop. It's astonishing how far we've come in just a few years with these machines. Now again, for comparison, here are the M1 scores. And what you can see is that M3 offers a 60% performance improvement for CPU decoding and a whopping 72% for GPU decoding. So if you've already got an M1 MacBook Air and you're something of an enthusiast or you're dipping into pro creative workflows, M3 actually offers a pretty compelling performance uplift. But let's just test now the drive speed with this M3 using amorphous disk mark. I have found the sequential read performance can be a bit variable, but as you can see from these results, we're hitting well over three gigabytes per second for both read and write on sequential performance. And frankly, all of the results here are excellent. I don't have a 256 model to test against at the moment, but just looking at these results in isolation is more than enough performance. Yes, there are faster SSDs out there, but unless you are frequently transferring huge files, you'll never know the difference. So this is an interesting release. The changes might be subtle, but it's a good iteration on an already great computer. Even with Apple's ludicrous inflated prices for upgraded RAM and storage, these three off-the-shelf SKUs offer good value for money, and there's something for everyone. We've got an excellent entry point with more than enough performance for the target users of these machines. But spend a couple of hundred more, and you gain two graphics cores, and you double your storage. And that makes an ideal middle ground for users who want or need a little more graphics power and storage on board. Spend another 200 pounds or dollars, and then you can double the memory, which is more than double the upgrade that it appears to be due to the way that the memory is shared in these systems. This particular configuration is an ideal do-it-all machine for enthusiasts, developers, creative professionals, and more besides. And having an off-the-shelf 16 gig model also means that in a couple of years' time, there will be more of these higher memory spec machines on the used market, and that's good news. So far, you can probably tell I'm really impressed with this machine, but I'm going to spend some more time now doing detailed testing. If there's anything specific you'd like to suggest, please leave a comment below. 
And if you're in the market for a MacBook Air, there are some great prices on M1 and M2 machines on Amazon, and I've put some links in the description. It doesn't cost you any extra to use these, but if you do choose to buy anything, the channel earns a small commission. So thank you for all of your support, your comments, your subs, your shares, your likes, even your dislikes. See you again soon for some more Geekery.